Okay, there we go. Ah, ah, Puffy, be nice, please. Be nice. Alrighty. Hi, guys. Hello. We're doing a, well, a Victoria cockatoo update because things have changed. Once again, things are always changing with Victoria cockatoo. Jesse, let me let you out. All right, he has been busy working on his squash. He gets a squash a day. This is why I'm growing squash, so I can keep up with his squash addiction. Because he, hello, Kathy, he loves squash, don't you? I'm going to close this a little bit so we can get a little better lighting. But this is what Jesse did. This was an acorn squash. And he enjoyed it, didn't you? Yeah! Hi, SRR founder. Hi, Mikio. How are you? How are you? We've had we've had some big changes with the Victoria Cockatoo again. So I wanted to update everybody. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Jess. Oh, whoa. Wow. Oh, watch out, Maui. He's going to toss it. It's okay, princess. It's so... Oh, oh. we just got to make a big deal out of this till he gets it, does what he wants to do. Are you saying you want some attention? Is this for some attention? Can I have a kiss? Can you give me a kiss? Thank you. I love those kisses. Can I give you a kiss? Oh, oh lots of attention. He's so funny. Hi, CB. Hello. Okay. Are you done, Jess? I gave you some attention. Oh, okay. Okay. Get, 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 get the little bugs out. Get the little bugs out. Shake, 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 shake. Get the little bugs out. Woo! Get those bugs out. Get those bugs out. Yeah, he has to shake. Like, I just got home. Get that energy out. Get that energy out. Flap, 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 flap. If he doesn't get the energy out, it's going to be bad. Okay, let me get him over here. Because these two, they will have, oh, oh, they will have a face-off. Okay, I know, go over here because he's going to hit you with the bowl again. He hit Maui with the bowl the other day. Okay, there we go. Now the bowl's dropped, so we can get to, we can talk about Victoria. Not, good job, Jess. That was entertaining. Oh, uh, let's see, Mikio, I'm feeling much better, April. I'm almost done shipping, whoa, 130 packages. How are you? We're doing okay. Um, so, hi, Angel. Hello, Kathy. So, um, Victoria, I, like, hit rock bottom um, a few days ago with her. I just felt like keeping her going, keeping her alive was not fair to her. And I made a post, and I deleted the post, actually, that I was, like, thinking about you know, letting her go. I, I just felt keeping her alive and having to go through all these tests. Um, it was, it was, it wasn't right, right for her. Right. So I don't know. I, I had that meltdown. I'm um, over the meltdown, but I did delete the post. Um, I'm sorry if I upset people. I, you have to understand this is something we've been dealing with for five years and it's been five constant years of Victoria going in and out of the hospital and having tests and me having to watch these tests done on her, right? And film a lot of them, right? So it's just kind of like hit a point where I'm just like, is this even right? Is this humane to be doing this to her? Sorry, Thomas. I had that moment. And Dr. G... <laughs> Dr. G, um, well, she, she put me in my place and she would never euthanize Victoria, first of all, um, cause she's not, she, Victoria's not at that point. So Dr. G helped me realize how far we've come and I really needed to see that I, you, cause you forget when you're in a situation and it just seems like it's just terrible and you forget how far you've actually come with that situation, and that's Victoria. 
Let me see if I can get her so you guys can look at her. Look at Thomas while I go get her. Because that's what everybody wants to see. You want to come with me? Princess. Oh. Uh, Okay. How about you want to come on my shoulder? Can the oh, can the princess girl sit? You sit here, and I'm gonna cover your poop. Thank you, CB. Yeah, I, I know you probably go through that too. Maybe um, it's just hard seeing them go through all this, right? And I know you understand, you've been going through a lot. Mikio understands um, a lot of birth. What's wrong, sweetie? So Victoria had one of those really bad days where she um, mutilated herself again. And what you, she wants to go back over there. You don't want to sit here? I'm going to put her back. She does not want to be here. So we'll let her do what she wants. So let's do this. I'm going to point it towards her. So you guys would much rather see her. There we go. And then I'm going to close this window a little bit, window so you can see her better. There we go. So when, hi, Grenar. Hello. So when Victoria started becoming really sick with the staph infection, and this bacterial infection, I forgot how bad she was. I don't know if you guys remember, but her little, um, this crop area was going in and out and her sinuses, even her head was expanding because she was trying to breathe and we didn't know what was going on with her. So, and that was last year. So now she can breathe without doing that. Dr. G listened to the top of her head. She didn't hear any whistling um, with a stethoscope. If a bird is having sinus issues, like really bad, if you put the stethoscope, yeah, on top of the head where the little bulb part of the cockatoo is. So I'm going to close these windows because my neighbors, they're, they're not going to like the noise. Um, she didn't hear anything. So that's really good. Um, so what's happened is I took her in for another test. What? 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 Are you going to bite me? What do you think? Do you think he's going to bite me? Will you step up nicely? Will you step up nicely? No? I think I'm going to get bit. Yeah, Mikio thinks you're going to bite me. Wow. So why are you screaming? If you want attention, I'm over here. And, and, and you're screaming. What's all that What's all that dirt on your beak? Are you going to be nice? Oh. I don't know. Puffy, I, I just have a really bad feeling about this. Yeah, let me get a stick, because if he clamps on, I don't have my other hand to re get him released, and he really hurts when he bites. You want to step up? Oh, okay, let's take you over here. Can you go there? And BB is in a bad mood. He actually tried to attack Thomas, so I had to put him in his cage and give him a little time out. Yeah, we can't have him attacking Thomas. You gonna, okay, you be nice to baby. If you're gonna go in there, you have to behave, okay? You have to be nice. Well, that's very nice, thank you. Aw, oh, oh, you're still waiting for Pato's Labs. So, um, back to Victoria. Yeah, I, I, I hope they can figure out what's going on with Pato. So, we did assign his flesh. And we sent what we found um, to the lab yesterday, my dog, that's M-I, uh, dog lab. And so that's heading out. 
And so that's going to see if the infection is gone, the staph infection and the bacteria infection is gone. If not, I'm going to probably have another meltdown. But um, so why I had a meltdown a few days ago was because she mutilated herself again. And then um, she was sneezing. And that's what really put me into a downward dive, the sneezing. And, you know, I get scared because it's like, did this antibiotics work? If not, we're like at the end of the rope. There's really nothing else we can do at this point to kill the staff. And it's so aggressive in its inner sinuses. You know, it's so close to her brain. So that's what's really scary. If that staff gets loose and goes up into her brain, I mean, she's done. So it's just we're trying to kill it. And then um, I took her in to see uh, Dr. Struby, uh, Victoria's ophthalmologist or the bird's ophthalmologist. And then he found this dot in her eye. So that upset me too because here we are. Um, it was like a really bad week for Victoria Cockatoo. And so he wants to see Victoria in a month. So she has to go back. Yep, we went, I, we went to the eye vet. And I was telling CB, we were texting the um, day before. I was just like, Victoria, I think she's going to die. Like, she looked terrible. She looked terrible. Um, she was just all fluffed and having a hard time balancing. I was just telling her, I think we're, I think she's done. And, and I said, I think I'm going to cancel that appointment. I, you feel my birds are not happy. Why? No, they're happy. It's just the sun's going down and this is the time they scream. And some of these birds are hormonal. You're not hormonal though. Are you Thomas? No. No, no, my birds are very happy. Um, so where was I? So I was just like, I was kind of freaking out. But so I took her to the ophthalmologist the next day and then he found that. So I'm glad I took her in. So she's on medication to help with that little spot he found in her cornea. And he hopes it's going to um, dissolve it. So that's really good. That's really good. Um, so I'm happy. I, well, we'll see what happens. So basically now, when I we, we went to see Dr. G yesterday, it was a two-hour appointment. She flushed. She's sending the sample to la the lab. And then so she took her off of her eye antibiotics, which is really good. And she said, we, we're not going to do any flushing right now. We're done with the antibiotic flush. She's going to give her a break. So I'm so happy because I think... That's going to be huge because this bird, I have been nothing but giving her meds throughout the day. And that's so, that's a lot, but it was necessary to do. Um, so now in the morning, she's getting her meloxicam, she's getting her gabapentin, and then she's getting her catorolac eye drops, which is to help with inflammation. And then she's getting her Opticare eye drops. And so I used to have to do even more. So believe it or not. So it's a good thing. And then like right now, in a few minutes, I'm going to give her her um, this biome, which is her probiotics. And I don't have to do a sinus flush. So I'm so happy. And then tonight, I'm going to give her this exact same what we do in the morning. And then she's going to have a breathing treatment, which she likes because she goes into, like Renard said, humidity helped his parrot with the sinus infection. Um, she's going to go into her little breathing treatment, which is going to be um, really ups the humidity, even though we're at like 70% humidity right now. Hi, Wyoming Adventure. How are you? Look at that beautiful wings. We love those wings. I don't know if you could just see, she actually pulled one of her big feathers in her wing. She was like missing a little feather there. So on that, so the other thing that we have um, in Dr. G's arsenal is Tramadol, which I don't know, I'm kind of nervous about Tramadol. Um, that's to help with pain. Hi, Ashley. Hello. Um, so the trauma doll is to help with pain and 
we're not quite sure if we're going to use it yet. Also, do you have an avian vet or does your vet do every animal? We do have an avian vet. Um, she, I think, can do every animal, but she, you know, I don't see her doing really any reptiles. But I do see, like, yesterday there was a duck. Um, she does a lot of birds, ducks, um, some dogs and cats, but she likes to keep her focus on parrots because we're, you know, San Diego's in so much need for a uh, avian vet. And dogs and cats here have a lot of other choices. So look at that handsome, handsome bird. Does Victoria ever tolerate a soft collar to cover the areas she seems to hurt at times? Sending love to you, uh, Victoria, and your flock. So I did give her, get her a soft collar, and after talking with Dr. G, we did try it on a couple days ago when I was really having a meltdown. And Victoria gets so hormonal. As soon as I put that collar on, she just starts panting. Look at her, she's stretching. She's way more comfortable up there. She starts panting and doesn't even want to move. Like, so it's just not practical, that soft collar. But what we did discuss was, and so this is, this is a thing. I see a lot would not do reptiles. Yeah, Dr. G would rather not do reptiles. She did see my gecko once, but not again. Oh, really, CB? <laughs> I, there's a really good um, reptile veterinarian up in Encinitas near you. I'll have to get you that name. Um, so CB, is it? Yeah, CB, C CBD, CBD oil. So this is the thing about CBD oil. Uh, I was talking to Dr. G about it yesterday and there is so much, if just so much we do not know about birds and CBD oil. And a lot of people give it to their birds, but the thing is you guys, there hasn't been any real solid test about CBD oil and the effects it has on parrots and if there are consequences for using this CBD oil. So I know there's people that are using it. Hello, Lourdes. And so, you know, it's something that you gotta be very careful because this, this is the, the problem. CBD oil is not um, regulated by the government. And so it's kind of like essential oils. They can add things in it that you don't know what's in there and parrots are so um delicate and you you can kill them so these companies are they're not being watched over so you got to be you know you got to be so careful um about the cbd oil now if your veterinarian has found one that they love that works you know that's great but um there are two companies that dr g is looking at right now because we might have to use this, but she did warn me. She did attend uh, the big avian conference and they actually talked about it for the first time because you know it's, it's growing popularity. People are using it on dogs and cats and they're, you know, good things are happening. But the thing about parrots is, especially different species, they all weigh different weights and they metabolize things differently like Kayik. Kayiks, they metabolize food so quickly and medication um, differently versus a cockatoo. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, NC Gregory. Would love to see more of it in the future videos. Plus, I'm always looking to get inspired. I actually have our bird room tour. If you Google that, uh, Parrot Playhouse bird room tour, and it takes you through the whole bird room. It's a whole bird room tour. Thank you. Um, so, and this is the other thing about, you know, testing different species and testing drugs. It's kind of sad, these birds that are in labs that are being tested. Okay, Victoria, don't do anything here. Um, don't do anything here. These two, it's a love-hate relationship. I think she just doesn't like him. He's in love. She's just like, why did you bring him home type of thing? And when is he leaving? And he's been here for two years. He's not going anywhere, Victoria. He's the part of the family. So <laughs> I'll never be able to get another bird. That's for sure. She gets, you know, she gets so jealous. 
I don't blame her. She came from a bad situation. And this one, oh, look at this bird. He is such a good bird. Oh, those ears. I love, you see his ear? I don't know if we can see his ear. I don't know. Some people have never seen a bird's ear. Where is that ear? That, oh, that precious, do you see that ear? That is Jesse's ear. For those of you who have never seen a bird's ear, that's what they look like. Isn't that cute? And they love it when you do this and just kind of scratch the inside of their ear. Yeah, that took a little while for me to be able to do that, for him to trust me. Now he does, and I love that. Lots of patience. Yeah, just moving slow with these guys goes a long ways, doesn't it, Jess? So, and so these birds that are being tested for different things, like when they're testing drugs, it's so terrible. Dr. G was telling me they, the state, basically whatever they have a lot of in the state is what they use. Like back east, they have a lot of Quaker parrots and they will use them to test different drugs in the lab. And some of these birds, they're using the same birds to do all these tests and, and injections and all that. And that's how we learn, which I think is so sad. Um, so they haven't actually really done that with the CBD oil, right? And like I said, each bird is going to react differently, each species, right? Because, you know, Haldol, Hald, Haldol, Don Scott uses Haldol on his cockatoos. Hello, Ramona. CIO from Italy. Hello, hello. And so he has good results with his Haldol. I don't want to use Haldol because once you start that, you're in, like, you can't miss a dose and you have to be on time. She's not there yet. I, I just, Dr. G and I, we don't want to go down that route. But he has good results. And, but Haldol in um, a cause, it's a whole nother story. Like, you, you talk to people that have given it to their bird, and I've even given it to the puff man. It wipes them out. Like, they, they, they are just out of it. it, it I just, personally, it, it did not work for those species. But maybe it does for other people. But it, I had a very bad experience. But Don Scott has it down to a science with cockatoos. Um, but, yeah, so that's the thing with the CBD oil. Don, uh, the Shore Sanctuary uses it on their dogs. And so they have a company that they really like that seems reputable. Um, so we're, we're going to definitely, Dr. G is going to research it more before she gives it to Victoria. Because that's like a big deal. It, you know, we just got to make sure that it's in there. And then there's different strains of CBD. Like, which one do you use? Like, it, it's a whole situation, you guys. It's a whole situation. It's so complicated. She was explaining it to me last night. She's just like, it's mind blowing. So be careful, you know, when you're seeing people use it on Facebook and saying, use this on your bird, this and that. You, oh, I need to get some rest. Continue pr prayers. Thank you, Mikio. Get some rest. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just be careful, you guys. And, you know, whatever you're, you know, go, always ask your avian vet. And when you're doing something big like that, because that's that's a big deal, even though, you know, you do see it on social media and they make it sound like it's not that big of a deal. It really is. Th those are things going into their little bodies and they digest things different um, than we do. And it just goes straight to their organs. So just be super careful. So that's what we discussed. And then we also discussed on Victoria, was there something we could uh, rub on her topically? And we came to the conclusion, no. Um, something that would numb her back here. We're gonna use Thomas as the example, her little wrists. These are like little wrists in the back actually. And you know, she's missing. And so it seems like she's having pain back there. Was there something we could rub back there to numb her? No, because you, you know when birds clean themselves, they rub their eyes. It would have gotten into her eye, it would have gotten into her mouth. So that's not an option. Um, so we did do cold laser therapy yesterday. Um, so that's what we're doing for pain. I would love to buy a laser 
down the road. Um, so I could do it like every day on Victoria, but they're expensive. Um, so in the meantime, we're gonna settle for once a week and go to Dr. G's and I'll just continue to get Victoria packages. Um, because I truly believe that cold laser therapy helps a bunch and it's not chemical. It's, and she loves it. Like she gets so relaxed. Um, let's see, do you possibly know which university your avian vet went to? The reason I ask is because I am looking to go to vet school. I want to say UC Davis, I could be wrong. Also, there's a really good vet school in Texas as well. Uh, Texas has some really good avian vets out there, you guys. Um, so, and then uh, I believe there's a vet school also in Tennessee. So Google those places. And I do know uh, Dr. G did her internship at the Bird Hospital with Dr. Spear in Oakland, California. He's amazing. And she's like, she's amazing. And we're so lucky to have her here. Okay. Um, so yeah, so th that's what's going on. And we'll know more in a week to see what's gonna happen. And so I'm just hoping now that her medicine, even though it sounds like she's on a lot of meds, which she is still, but it's not good. At least she doesn't have to have the sinus flush for right now. Um, I think that's going to help her stress level. It's going to help mine too. There's nothing worse than having to wrap your bird up in a towel, tip her forward and flush her sinuses. It's just not a good time, but it was necessary. Do you have a cold laser rep from manufacturing company or a group? Um, oh, I do not have a cold laser representative. Dr. G does though. Um, and I forget the brand that we're using of the cold laser. If you go on to my Instagram post or Facebook post and go down, I put the name of the laser that we do use. They do have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Um, you'll be able to find it because I, I did tag them. And so those will be posts probably from last month, I think. But the laser that Dr. G uses is really nice. And I think that laser runs around $3,000. I think that's what she said it was. Hi, Mr. Bueno. So, but that's what's, that's what's happening right now. And um, yeah, so just kind of up and down, up and down. And I just really need to get Victoria through this tough patch. But Dr. G basically said that, I'm sorry, do you want some food? This is what I made for them. It's Bird Street Bistro. Thomas likes to eat out of the bowl, so it's still cooling off. Often they can get it cheap. They do a deal. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's a good, that's a good idea. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out. Um, CB, my green cheek pocket is so sweet. He always asks, are you okay? Oh, that's so sweet. Isn't that nice? And they know exactly what they're asking. Jesse will ask that too sometimes. I, we do like Bird Street Bistro. Um, this is the one that they're eating today, Connie. So, apple berry. And this one cooks in three minutes. And you know what I really liked? They sent this in it. And I mean, this is information I already know, but look at that, foods to avoid. Can you imagine like a new bird parent or somebody that doesn't know this information and they get this and they read it? They can actually save a bird's life by sending this magnet out. I thought that was really cool. So I put that there so I could show you guys. That just shows they really care. So that made me happy. I should probably like be one of their um, representatives. I talk about them so much because I really like them. Um, he heard your birds and wanted to make sure everything was okay. Oh, that's so sweet. Reps can get free. I used to rep for humans, but same stuff on animals. I'll check your website. Cool, thank you. I didn't even think about that. And I almost wonder if they have like refurbished, re, uh, la refurbished lasers. 
great. I bought a refurbished camera. Um, so I'm wondering, does the company sell refurbished now? Now that you got me thinking, because that might really save some money, which I could use. Huh, Victoria? And then she could have a laser, which would be so nice. Thank you, Annie. Oh, so she's going to eat. I don't have the lights on, you guys, because it's been so hot. And um, I'm trying to keep the, the heat down in here. It's, like, really humid. They do usually. Ooh, Annie. Cool. Yeah, okay. I'm excited. I wish I could remember the laser company, but I do have it on my, our Instagram and Facebook. Um, that'd be so neat. Is that good, Victoria? Yeah. She is such a good girl. Noah says, hi, Victoria. Hello. Is that good? She just loves her Bird Street Bistro. I usually add, I didn't do it today because I got home and I was in a really big hurry. But I usually add, like, um, I chop up some uh, vegetables. And then once I'm done cooking the bistro, I'll just throw the raw vegetables in the pot and turn off the heat, the burner. And I just let it steam lightly. And so it still has all the good nutrients. And I never, when I warm it up, I never microwave it because that'll get rid of those good nutrients. And I just pour warm or hot water from the tea thing onto it, like the next day when I warm it up and then I just mix it. And so I don't use the microwave um, for them, you guys, because the microwave just really gets rid of all that good nutrition that you're spending all that money on hoping your birds are gonna get. So I, I find warm water or just heating it lightly on the stove it's super quick. I think it's almost as fast as the microwave. Oh, no, no, how nice. I pray a rosary for Victoria Cockatoo a couple days ago. Oh, thank you so much. Maybe that's why she's doing better. It means so much when everybody, you know, you guys say those things, you, you do things like that. It's just a really big deal when you're thinking about her and that's just so neat. It's just the love of the bird community. And there's Jesse. Oh, now, oh, he, he wants his privacy. He's, he's enjoying a Parrot Playhouse bird toy. Do you like this one? I just made this one, let's see. So I did blocks, square blocks, and I did round, and then a square round. I find it a little bit more challenging for these guys. They like to just peel that wood up. What do you think? Yeah? Are you gonna bite me? I hope not. Ow, and you did. You did. Ow. Look. Hi. How are you? Oh, look, look at his crazy eyes. Hey! Oh, you little stick. Whoa, what? Maui? Wait, where is he? He is like. These kayaks are, you just never know what you're walking into, really. He's so funny. So he's very sensitive about how I wear my hair. He does not like the curls and it's a problem because it's humid and I can't get it straight. Another thing he doesn't like, he'll attack me is if my hair's wet. Like he will not come near me, but he'll try to kill me if my hair's wet. I think because when my hair is wet, it's darker, but he loves me when my hair is straight. Like when my hair is straight, of course, like he'll come to me. He's so sweet, but it's like Maui. It's like hot and humid. I just, even if I was to blow dry my hair for you, it's going to like go back to curly again. So birds are so particular and you know what I get sometimes I'll have, and it happened to me years ago because I used to naturally I have dark hair. I don't know if you guys have seen my mother, but my mom has black hair, right? So, um, crazy birds, they are all their quirks. So I wanted to go lighter. So I'm a hairdresser, I made my hair lighter. This was when I was younger. I was, um, what was it, 20 years old. And I've had baby, I've had baby for like ever. Um, my Amazon over here, he's my first parrot. I've had him since I was a kid. He attacked me. 
Like he would not come near me. It was, it was terrible. I was crying. So I had to color my hair back after seven hours of bleach, the hair salon. I had to go back to the same color and my hair was just trashed and he wouldn't have anything to do with me till I did that. So I slowly had to make my hair light. It took 10 years to get it light for them to get used to it. I have to put one highlight, another highlight and be like, Oh, are you okay? A couple more highlights. I'm like, Oh, are you guys okay? And then I like, finally, I got it light after a gazillion years. They're so sensitive, these birds. Okay, I see questions. Um, NC Gregory, can I ask what you normally feed Jesse? I have a gray who is the absolute pickiest and would love some recommendations since I've tried so many brands, including uh, Fresh Food Daily. Okay, so I have it right here. Is it getting really dark in here? I'm sorry. Okay, let me see. Let me show you. I have it in the refrigerator to keep it fresh. So this is the thing. Grays have a tendency to get overweight easy. And so Higgins has different products, different pellets, and they have the coarse, um, I forget what it is, coarse lifetime. And that one he loves, but it's, uh-uh, Victoria, leave him alone. It's too fattening. And so Dr. G said I had to get him off of it. So this is the adult lifetime and this is what he's on. So it's, um, no, oh, sorry, Harrison's, Harrison's, not Higgins. I do feed, I do feed Higgins as well, but this is Harrison's, but this is what Jesse eats. And I love this company. You know, there's a lot of good companies out there. It's just finding one your birds like. And they're, it's organic. So... I, I do like it and I do keep it in the um, refrigerator to keep it fresh. Are you coming down here? And you know what you could do? I have a video how to convert your parrots to pellets. I would watch that because it has some really good information. And you can get a coffee grinder, but only for pellets, not one that you use to grind coffee beans. You can grind these pellets. And I don't know what your bird eats. You know, maybe you're trying to get your gray off of a seed diet. What you can do is grind these pellets into dust and then wet the seed just a little bit and sprinkle this on top of it. And that is how when I get a new bird here, which I won't be probably for a long time because Victoria uh, says no more birds. Um, that's what you can do. Oh, and then also, yeah, uh, CB said, Harrison Power Treats, my birds love. Yeah, I also feed um, the Power Treats. They look kind of the same. Oh, so yes, he was on seed and peanut diet for 12 years. I got her last year and it's been hard. Yeah, and you know what? Gra gra grays are tough. Grays are really, really picky. And so that's what I would recommend. Um, with a clean, make sure the water bottle is clean because those little inside the water bottle, I'm always telling people if they're going to use a water bottle to spray their birds, like every time take that little pipe out and get the slime out, like clean it because it does grow bacteria in that water bottle. And so if you're using it to spray, just make sure it's clean and lightly mist and then sprinkle the powder on top and do it that way. And you will see progress because that bird is going to be having to get through the seed is going to have to have no, uh-uh, let's not do this. I know Jesse's throwing kisses and Victoria means business. Um, I don't even know what I was saying, but yeah, just make sure the water bottle is clean. And what you also want to do is you, you bit me. I'm not going to pick you up because you wet the seed it, it'll grow bacteria so just make sure you change it out after three hours especially if it's are you gonna dance especially if it's really hot right you don't want that bacteria growing and that can definitely happen especially right now when we're having warm humid weather bacteria and mold can really grow in your birds bowls and so you want to like i my birds bowls they get washed out three times a day here because some of them like to make soup and so that's what you do 
Um, also, what you can try with, you, you know, pellets is try this one. Oven Fresh Bites. Now, birds love Kai Tech Oven Fresh Bites. And you can order it directly from the company, which I recommend because you know it's fresh. And this is what it looks like. And it smells so good. It has cinnamon in it. And cinnamon is an antibacterial, which I love, right? Whoa, what's going on over there? So that makes me happy knowing that they're eating something that's antibacterial and it has cinnamon. Oh, Victoria wants hers. And many of my birds love, love, is she going to eat it? Love Kai Tech. Oh, she doesn't want, it, but that's what she eats. And you can also grind those up too. And they taste so, they taste so good. And they're baked. So all the good stuff is baked inside. Um, I also use this one. I have to, I'll buy big bags, you guys, because right now, like, food's expensive, right? So what's going on? If I can get a deal, I stock up. So Baby likes the natural Zupreme. And also what I'll do is I'll use the natural Zupreme, and then I'll also use Higgins. And I kind of just give them a little bit of everything. And Higgins is colorful and it's, they use vegetable dye, so natural. So it's like beets and stuff like that to color their um, pellets. So this is really good when you're converting a bird. That's kind of difficult. Parrots do like colors, a lot of parrots do. And that will attract them. So you can also do that. and. I am like a big believer of the coffee grinder. You can buy one on Amazon for like $20 and just designate it for your bird's pellets. Don't, don't use um, coffee beans because you can kill them. Because it, all it takes is a little bit of that residue. So you, you don't want to do that. Okay. So got that, learned that one of your vids, she actually likes it, but I love giving them all the variety. So looking for other foods. So yes, Higgins in tune, that was the colored one. And then Zupreme Natural. And then Harrison's, the uh, adult lifetime. And try Kai Tech. Try the Kai Tech first. I'm really curious. Good for you for charging the, changing the diet. That's tough. I know, right? That is tough. And let me tell you, sometimes it could take years, but don't give up. Don't give up. Um, one day, your bird will surprise you. I got to turn on the light because it's getting dark now. Like, things are, who's that? Things are getting, hello, hello. Things are getting dark quicker. Okay, I'm going to go see. I'm going to turn on the light and see if that helps. Well, of course, it helps to get a lot of light. Okay. Can we do that light or do we need to do the big light? Whoa, oh my goodness, we got light. Wow. So now we're lit. We are so lit in here. <laughs> what do you think? Why not? Okay, so now you can really see everybody. Whew, it's bright. There's Sammy. Jess, what's going on over there? Let's see, Wyoming Adventures. I have a friend who can pet Rocky and I can't touch her. Just getting on my finger. Um, I fed Harrison. Isn't that funny? And then all birds are so different. And then Annie says, our ER vet in Orch Park, New York, we had first in instruments for laparoscopy. The vet loved them, some serious instruments, and it would be years for birds. Really? Wow. Um, and then Queen K and Pat said, yes, that's true about microwaves. They do the same to human food as well. That's why I've stopped using them and because of the radiation they give out. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, Angel, April, I have to go. I have a phone call coming in. Have a blessed day. Angel, it's so nice to talk to you. And then also, um, U.S. ARC, they're having some problems in Florida. They passed a bill similar to what we were trying to not get passed um, throughout the country. Florida passed it. So I don't want to say it on here because actually if I talk about anything like this, YouTube will demonetize me because the last time I was talking about it, I got in trouble. 
so I don't want to bring it up, but Angel, call US, USS Ark and find out, or I'll message you later what happened um, with the exotics in Florida. They came down hard last week. Okay, Dory. Hi, Dory. Hi from Dory and her flock. Fids, all my fids eat Kitech oven fresh bites. Aw. So you have them all on oven fresh bites. That's great. Dory, are you away from all the fires? I know um, Hemet is on fire and real bad. We had a fire here in the canyon uh, last week, but they got that out real quick. So it's just wild. Okay, good, Angel. Yeah, find out because I'm kind of in shock. I haven't had a chance to really investigate, but I believe they came down real hard in Florida with the reptiles. They snuck it through while we were all being distracted. Yeah. So whether it's going to affect the birds, I don't know. But they are really going after the reptiles right now. So, okay. Dory Thompson. Oh, good. Some ash. Good rain today. I know. Thank God we had rain. Good. So hopefully those fires don't come anywhere near you. And I hope they can get that Lake Elsinore fire out. They're having to evacuate so many animals. Wyoming, you had snow last night. That is crazy. We're having like really hot weather here. And then we're having like floods right now. I guess we're having like a, um, um, a hurricane. <laughs> so weird. So we're having like a hurricane here. And um, it's not like what you get in Florida, but for San Diego, San Diegans can't drive in rain. Like they're not, it's embarrassing really. And um, they're, they're just like crashing into each other. It doesn't take a, it's just like a little sprinkle and the whole city is like upside down. It's, it's kind of embarrassing actually. Um, yes, it was over a hundred a couple days ago. That's nuts. Like 20 minutes from here, it's literally like over a hundred and it's hailing and like heavy winds all at the same time. So like 108 hailing, flooding, trees coming down not that far from here it's so bizarre it's like i i was just thinking how big were those are those hails when they start out with and they're, they're melting on the way down i mean they must be the size of a brick yeah but we're not having that here although the bird room almost flooded earlier today i wasn't home but my mom was home and the patio part over here um started to flood and so she had to like shovel the water out my poor mom had to do double time to not let the bird room flood because it would have been a disaster wyoming adventures thank you so much for the super chat look at that little what is that like a little fox sticker that's so cute it's definitely like a little dog do you see that thomas bueno, bueno. Yay! crazy i'm crazy to who posted that wyoming went from 100 to snow isn't that nuts you must have i know she must have like a, a headache going from that kind of temperature change like that just the thought of that hurts my sinuses does it hurt your sinuses huh going from super hot to super cold like how how does that even work what do you think thomas is that no bueno yeah wild and how i, I just don't even know how the wild animals acclimate to that I live right by the mountains. Wow. How nice. I would love to get out of the city, but it's, it just seems like an impossible task with a cockatoo that has to go to the vet like twice a week. Don't attack me. I will blow dry my hair straight again for you. I promise, but not today. I will go straight again for you, Maui. I promise. Jesse's working on his wood. You, darling, you're amazing. I will look for your website tomorrow. I hope I can help you be safe. Thank you so much. Make sure you rest. Many blessings to you. Thank you, Annie, for looking at the website. Yes, thank you. So look at him. I love it when birds chew wood. How are you doing? Oh, you love that wood? He's, I, mommy made that for Oh, yeah, mommy made that for you. Yes, she did. She cut the wood. She dyed the wood and she put it on the string just for you. And I love it that you're enjoying it. 
Yeah, I have been, it's been really hot and humid. I was in the workshop cutting wood all day, you guys, on, um, what was it, on Tuesday? Holy moly. I thought I was gonna die out there. It's like gross, cause you have the saw going and all the sawdust and you're like, it's humid and hot and it's like the sawdust is like sticking to you. And I have to wear a mask and goggles. I was like, this is crazy. But look at him, he's enjoying it. So it's all worth it. Um, Wyoming Adventures, my budgies love your toys. Aww, I'm so happy to hear that. And thank you for ordering. That makes me so happy when birds enjoy the toys. That's, that's a big reason why I do it. And there was just so many um, danger, dangerous toys on the market. And I was finding it hard to find safe toys for my birds because they were coming from places, um, you know, I, I was just kind of like, where is this coming from? It was really scaring me. And so um, I started making them for my birds. And then during the pandemic, I lost my job. And I was like, you know what? How about I start making bird toys and start selling them because you know there's like a demand for them people need safe toys so that's how it started during the pandemic i reinvented myself i learned how to use a saw and um yeah just i went from making a few toys for my birds to like major production like a full-on workshop it's so i would have never imagined that two three years ago i've been like no way i don't even know how to drill a hole in a piece of wood Yet alone now, I'm like using saws and different kinds of wood. I'm just like, what is happening? Even if you tie your hair up, does he still try to attack you? I don't know. Kayaks are like, maybe I can describe them as Florida weather, right? One minute sunny, the next minute it's raining. I never know what side of the perch he's gonna wake up to. And normally he doesn't do this, it's puffy. That doesn't, I think Puffy enjoys it, really. Look at these two. What's going on over there? Keep that door open, don't shut your door. No privacy for you two. Never know what you're gonna be doing. Uh-huh, I'm keeping my eye on you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just never know. But he, actually Maui, I hate to say like cuddle bug, but he is kind of my cuddle bug. Kikes, I, I don't like to say any bird cuddles, right? Um, cause you don't want to cuddle them cause they can get hormonal and nesty and all that stuff. But at night, what are you doing? He does like me to like, just hold him tight and kiss him. And he gets all relaxed and falls asleep. And then I put him in bed. That's like our time together. What? Are you showing off? He's just so funny. I just, I love him. My heart hurts. My heart hurts for all these birds. I love them so much. It's like the best. Look, they're both. It's so funny. They, like one will start preening and then the other one will start doing the same thing. Like one will start yawning. Look at that. They're doing the same thing. And then the other one will start to yawn. It's, it's so cute. I hear Victoria chewing a toy in there. Ooh. Oh, yes. I love it. I love that my birds enjoy their toys. It's like I constantly have to keep the toys coming. It's just wild. Um, Dory, your birds sound happier than mine right now. While I am enjoying your parrot happy hour, my birds know I am enjoying my glass of wine and paying attention to other birds. You know what it is? They hear my birds make a noise, and so they're just going crazy. That's what happens. Like, if the wild parrots fly over, my birds come unglued, and then, like, if people are watching my live stream, they go, your birds look upset or unhappy, like what we just had. Um, I, You know, that person came in on the thing and said, your birds seem unhappy, and I'm talking about Victoria going to the vet and mutilating and this and that. Yeah, I, I could see... I could see where a new viewer might say that, that has not followed this uh, Victoria Cockatoo journey. <laughs> um, my blue and gold macaw loves me at night on only, hate by day. Isn't that weird? Puffy loves me in the morning when he wakes up. I gotta get him fresh right out of his sleepiness. I give him his kisses, I tell him I love him. And throughout the day, 
what happens is when I put him in the aviary outside and he plays, he something changes and he becomes Chucky. He turns into the Chuck monster and he wants to eat me. Um, so he changes. It, you can come out, but do not, do not attack Thomas, please. And do not attack me. That's all I ask. Hi, are you gonna be nice? Hi, okay. You see, there's always that moment where you're just like, is he gonna like bite me or is he gonna like come to me? You wanna crawl up? Huh, oh, he's giving me that sweetness. See that sweet sound he does? You just never know with a kayak. You just never know. One minute, did you see how he wanted to bite me earlier? And now he's just like, oh, I love you so much. I am so sweet and adorable. I want to like wipe all the food on my beak on your shirt. And then I'm probably going to poop on you. I love those sounds he makes. Hi, Alice. Hi, April. Victoria looks great. I want to ask you, can birds get COVID? Ooh, that is another word I can't say on here. No, they cannot. But they can get other things from us. So we've got a lot of gram-negative bacteria, right? We've got excess amounts. And parrots have a small amount of gram-negative bacteria, but mostly gram-positive. And if we are sick or if we're letting them eat out of our mouths or share our drinks with them, if they're a little under the weather or hormonal or not feeling, you know, 100%, that gram-negative bacteria can grow at a really bad level. And that's when they become sick with different things, right? So that's why I do kiss my birds. Um, I try to, like, wipe my lips and then kiss them. It's so hard not to kiss them, right? Um, but I do, and I try not to do it on here because it's a bad example, but I do sometimes. But I do, like, wipe my lips, and sometimes I just, ugh, ugh, got it. I, I was kissing Victoria's legs earlier today. Like, I was just, like, I wanted to eat her legs. She's so, like, so cute. I can't help it. Um, so, yeah, so they can get germs from us. Hey, 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 hey. So you want to be careful, and you want to wash your hands before you touch them. And then you also want to remember your cell phone carries a lot of germs. Okay, that's enough, you too. Your cell phone carries a lot of germs. So always remember to sanitize your phone, right? Before you touch your birds. Because I don't, you know, these cell phones, they are like, if you think about it, you're touching them during the day and then you're wiping these phones on your face. I think that's how a lot of people get sick. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not liking this. Back, hold on, I got a problem. Woo I got, I got a problem for me. Do you see that body language? I just don't know. But she, I just, I don't chance it, right? She's never hurt another bird, but this body language is not promising right now. She's just, you know, she's jealous and I don't blame her. Hi. So I hope I answered your question. So hard not to smother them in kisses. I know. Well, this one, don't you attack me. It's, it's kind of easier. Do I ever smother you in kisses? I think one time I, I tried and he, I, that's when I had the stitches on my lip. We'll see. Uh, you see that scar? Right there. He went all the way through my lip. He was hanging from it. Like full on beak all the way through. I came home from work and I said, what did I say? Probably something dumb like, oh, you're so cute. I love you so much. Give me a kiss. And he went, okay. And wouldn't let go stitches so totally my fault he's like I don't want your germs he's like lady you're not gonna give me those germs come here Victoria oh look it she's on the ground he's coming down I don't know if you can see him I parrots you gotta always be like wait I hear baby you always have to be on the move when they're out right you gotta always pay attention to them because Things happen so quickly in the bird room. Injuries can happen with these big beaks. Look at baby. These are like toddlers with knives running around. Hi, are you like, hey, 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 oh, hold on. 
Let's move this over here. Whoop! No! Oh! No! Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. Here we go. Quinn, go up there, sweetie. Okay. Yeah. No! This is what I'm talking about. You always have to be alert when you've got parrots because it happens so quick. Some days, they all get along really well, right? Everything's going great. Everybody's happy. And you go, oh, this is great. And then the next day you put your guard down, right? Because you're like, oh, everything went so good. Everybody's getting along. And then all of a sudden, bird tacks another bird and you've got problems. Don't you? Yeah, you've got big problems. This one, I do not trust today. Do you see how he is... Like, you see that look he's giving me? That's a serious look. You see how his, see how he's following my hand? Whew. I do not want to take my eye off of that one today. Mm-hmm. You know, when the weather is like this, when it's raining, it really makes them hormonal. And the reason why is when it's raining in the wild, it tells the birds there's plenty of food because food is coming. Um, there's plenty of water and that makes them want to get nesty and reproduce, right? They get nesty and they get hormonal when it's raining. So that is what's going on today. Um, for those of you, like, if you ever wonder why your birds go crazy when it rains, why do you get bit when, if you, I don't know if you've noticed, but that's one of the reasons why. So especially after it's been so hot, this is like a total change in weather for them. So there's going to be different behaviors happening. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. And especially the queen, Victoria. Hold on. Quinn needs help. He's such a good bird. Victoria likes to take over his spot, even though her cage is way bigger. She still wants his cage. Now, I don't know if it's because she came out of a cage the size of a parakeet cage, right? Lived like that all her years. I don't know. Or does she feel nesty when she's in a smaller cage? Who knows? I wish they could tell me. Um, cuddling is the best. I only have my dog to cuddle, but if I had a bird, I'd cuddle those too. Well, you can only cuddle them so much because the thing about birds it can really backfire if you over cuddle because they, they do want to get nesty and they can start laying eggs and they do they can get aggressive so it's it's a tough it's so tough because when they're sick too it's not like especially when she doesn't feel good when she's hormonal and she doesn't feel good I just want to like hold her and cuddle her but I can't right because it makes the problem worse um, I am going to use the quote, toddlers with knives. I know. They are toddlers with knives. Um, does Victoria love everybody and the flock? <laughs> you probably typed that right before she went and kind of, you know, she she's really sweet. But other birds have attacked her like that group over there. Baby and Puffy when she first came. They full on came at her. And I tried and tried. They they wanted to kill her. So she knows that they're bad news. So she will, she gets scared when she's around them. She loves Mr. Bueno. Thomas has never tried to hurt her. Aw, yeah. Thomas is just a sweet, so sweet. Um, she's nice to Sammy. Quinn, she just kinda, I don't know what it is with Quinn. Everybody just kinda pushes Quinn around. He is a wild, he's from the wild flock. He is a wild parrot, but he couldn't be released. Back at there, he's just way too food motivated. He'll come down to people. Don't bite me. He's doing that because he's up there. It's displaced aggression. Um, these two, I, I fostered Quinn because I thought Thomas would enjoy the company. No, because they're the same species. I was so wrong. It, it worked out for a little bit. But now it's like competition and they do not work. This Quinn starts to kind of, I don't know what it is. He tries to intimidate Thomas. Thomas, I think, gets scared. 
because Thomas is handicapped, so he's ha Thomas like overacts tough because he's scared these birds are gonna hurt him. And those two have tried. They're the bullies of the room. Uh, they, if they weren't here, this room would be so calm if it wasn't for those two. But they're not going anywhere. There's no other place to put them. So I just watch them. They're trouble. Um, but yeah, so it just shows same species aren't gonna always necessarily get along. And people are always like, they want to get two kayaks and put them in the same room, in the same cage. And I'm like, yeah, that might work for like the first few years before they become sexually mature. Then they become extremely territorial and they will kill each other. I mean, there are some times where it works, but certain times of the year, you definitely want them to have their own cage. Because I was one of those that got two at the same time. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, right, years ago. I've learned so much, and I joined Parrot Education and Adoption Center. It's a rescuer in San Diego, and that's where I got pretty much all my bird knowledge from them. And Susan Freeman came out, and Barbara Heighton, right, came out. Like, um, they brought in some really incredible uh, trainers, doctors, and so I had, like, access to all this stuff and education, and I took all the courses and stuff, so that's where I learned. But before all that, I didn't know anything. So I got two kayaks, so Puffy was not a rescue. I didn't know there were birds that needed to be rescued back then. That was like 18 years ago. And I didn't even know there were like parrot rescues or parrot education. So I bought him and his brother and got one cage. What a disaster. Um, I had to get two cages because Puffy was so aggressive. He was six months when I got him, and then it, like, he was intense. So got two cages. Pierre lived, lived, I think, to be 13, maybe longer. How long has he been gone? I think he's been gone for six years. He died of stomach cancer. It was terrible. Mm. But Puffy was destroyed, and then that's when Puffy and Baby became best friends. Baby felt so bad for him and stepped up to the plate and literally took Puffy under his wing. And that's when he, Baby started rolling with the wrong crowd. And that's when I lost Baby, because Baby used to be my bird. Him and I were like Velcro. And when Puffy became Baby's priority, or Baby's mate pretty much, that's when I lost Baby. But I'm happy that they have each other. I think bird relationships are so important but it's also something to think about, right? If you have a bird that adores you, loves you, and you bring another bird, uh-uh-uh, no, no, don't you attack me. Step up, step up. Thomas is right here, hold on. I don't want him attacking Thomas. Thomas actually has seizures if he gets scared. I'm gonna put him up there. Um, that's something to think about. If you're bringing a new bird into your home, they can either not get along, or they're gonna get along too good, right? And so you have to be prepared that it can change. And same if you're bringing a, a, someone else into your household and you got a parrot and you're, you and your parrot are like best buds, that can change too. They can trade you out real quick for the new person. It's, it's wild. And so that's why it's important never to take anything personal when you have a parrot, they're wild animals and you have to understand this. And so they're living in this foreign land. They're supposed to be in, you know, the wild. So they're just trying to do the best they can do with emotions and feelings that they have that they don't understand, um, especially during nesting season. They're just so confused. They're just like, what, what is happening? You know, they're supposed to be flying and looking for food and doing things. And, and, but, you know, they're, they're in captivity. So we just do the best we can. I know I do. Um, Queen K Empath, I hope I don't sound stupid saying this, but I don't think they could still get hormonal if they had a hysterectomy. They can because she still has her ovaries. And so because she has her ovaries, she can still produce egg yolk. So, and that makes it dangerous, right? Because then she doesn't make the shell anymore. And so um, they can't remove ovaries because the ovary is next to a, one of the largest arteries. 
And so when you're doing surgery on a parrot, you gotta understand they're mostly air and they're full of air sacs. Um, birds, some species of birds can have up to nine air sacs. They got air sacs up here, they got air sacs, and that's what they're, they use as lungs. And so that's why it's important when you have sprays, chemicals around the birds, they don't have like the system like we do where our lungs go through and filter everything before it goes straight to our organs. It just goes straight to their organs. And that's why these birds, when we're cooking with Teflon pans, we've got essential oils, different things like that. They die so quick. They suffocate. Their um, air sacs don't absorb um, oxygen and it's a terrible death. So, but yes, so that's why they still do get hormonal and they feel all these things is because they can't remove that artery if they, I mean that ovary. If they did, the bird would bleed out. I think uh, Dr. Lada said 15 seconds. And so because it's all air, it's all connected. So when you're in there moving things, you gotta be so careful. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, what was it January, Victoria was having problems last January and Dr. Laudis did a biopsy. Uh, what was he biopsying? You know, we were looking for stuff, trying to see what's going on with her. And he accidentally went through an air sac with the scope. And because he punch, punctured an air sac, um, cause she had that hysterectomy, so she had scar tissue. So it wasn't hard, it was, it's so like in there, it's so hard. Um, it's so easy for things to go wrong. The air, I don't know if you saw it, it filled up all of her head. She was like a bubble bird. Her eyes were sticking out. It was terrible. She was in a lot of pain. Like it was a disaster. And that's when Dr. G came into the picture. A uh, Dr. Laudis was on, uh, he went out of town and she saved Victor Victoria's life. Um, my, let's see, Ivan, my macaw has an air sac rupture. Is it safe? It's always good to take your bird to the vet if they have an air sac rupture, because you want to make sure it's an air sac rupture. Um, did you take your bird to the vet? Um, so air sacs can eventually deflate, but Victoria did need help. Um, that air sac that ruptured was, it turned out to be a big deal. Um, Munchkin, I don't know if you guys follow Munchkin, he had an air sac rupture from flying in a plane. And so that, you know, sometimes they do need medical help. So that's why I always say, take them to the vet if you can. Not everybody has access to an avian vet though, I know. How do you train your bird to talk or whistle songs? I have a cockatiel, I notice them starting to sing. I don't train them to talk at all. I just let them be what they're gonna be. So if they wanna pick up the sounds that I say, or um, like Jesse lets me know if he wants more water, if he wants an apple, like Jesse, Jesse, under, he understands what words to use for certain things. Um, so I don't, I'm not one of those that just plays recordings or do anything like that. To me, it's not important that my birds talk, um, but it's important that I understand their body language. It's important that I understand what they need and they can tell me what they need um, by, I can just look at them and I understand their body language. I understand like different sounds that they make. They all have like a different manual. Each bird is an individual in here. Um, even the same species, lilacs, they're totally different. Um, so yeah, so for me, I, I just, I, I don't teach them to talk. They just pick up words and look what she's doing. So she breaks off wood and then she tries to, it's so weird, you know, cockatoos, cockatoos do different behaviors and this is one that they do. Now there's a name for this. I don't remember what it is, but they actually, it's something they, they like, They'll like put it on the back of their wings. It's, they do some interesting things. Okay, my macaw had an air sac rupture. Is it safe? Okay, I did, but they said it's fine. It comes back whenever she is outside or scared. Okay, so that makes sense, Ivan. That makes sense. So if they said it's fine, it, it will be fine. Victoria's air sac ruptured because she had trauma in the surgery. So that was kind of like a, a different thing. Um, some birds, Wait, wait, where is the air sac? Is, are you talking about your, um, 
your bird's crop right here? Does your, does your macaw's crop fill up with air? Now that happens sometimes with macaws and that happens with the puff man. I don't know if you guys have seen him where he really puffs up and he fills his crop with air. Um, macaws do do that when they feel scared or when some of them just like how it feels. Some of it do, do it. They do it when they're feeling hormonal. Um, they'll fill up their air sac. Victoria's air sac was filling up right or not air sac crop was filling up when she wasn't feeling good. When her sinuses were really clogged, that was filling up and puffy fills up with air when he's feeling dominant hormonal, he'll fill up his air sac. And it's so funny. Um, Dr. G, uh, I told her, if you push on it, he sounds like a squeaky toy deflating. Don't do that with your birds, though, you guys. But Puffy, I, I, him and I, we go way back, but it was kind of funny. Yeah, so macaws, they will fill their crop up with air. And it is so scary, especially if you got one that's naked. Victoria, you're just like, what is going on? So it could be a number of things, but sometimes they do it when they're feeling hormonal and they'll just kind of puff up or if they're not feeling good or they're just being silly. Some birds like how it feels. So um, how did the puff man get his name? So puffy, he got his first. He was puffy because he was always filling up with air. Even when he was little, he'd fill up in, with air and be like, he'd puff up and it, I would take him to the doctors, you know, like he was always filling up with air. And so he was named Puffy. And then he became the Puff Man as he got serious attitude. Because doesn't he look like a Puff Man? Like total Puff Man. And then just these last few months, he has become Chucky. When he's attacking everything, I call him Chucky or Chuck Man. Puffy has like a million names. Don't ya? Yeah, it's kind of funny. And look at his beak. Has sticky stuff. He's so funny. But that's how he got his name. <laughs> yeah, but birds are so interesting. There's so much to learn about them. And there's so much we do not understand about these birds. And vets will tell you that as well. A lot of bird medicine is guessing because there's just so much they don't understand about these wild animals I, I it's just they're a mystery a lot of it and there's so many different species right so there's just so much to constantly learn ivan she also has wet stools we didn't every possible test and blood work but she is completely clean the vet said she is healthy it is normal the macaws have wet stools and she might eat more wet foods right Ooh, look at this one you know if she's eating more fruit she, and sometimes macaws might drink more water. I could see wet stools. Puffy has wet stools. Um, he has wet stools because he eats, don't attack, don't, hey, he eats a lot of fruit. You know, I like to, he's kind of like a hummingbird to me and his tongue is shaped differently. These are nectar birds here. They, they in the wild, they will eat nectar. So I wish he would show the tongue, but then he also likes Eve eat live things, which that's why I keep an, him in an aviary to protect the wildlife outside because he will kill things, which is not good for him because he could get a parasite eating something like a lizard or another hummingbird, which we don't ever want to happen again. That was a total accident, huh, Puffy? A poor hummingbird thought he was a flower. Ugh, so now I keep him in the aviary because he's so fast. He's such a hunter. He's attracted to movement. Um, my oldest boy goes aggro at my mom when we have guests over or the phone is answered. You see, they all have different, different little things about them, don't they? So nice to see so many birds out and keeping busy. Like right, right after I read that, I put them in the cage. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I keep these birds out a lot when I'm in this room and I'm in this room all the time. And when they're not here, they're outside. And so I, my mom and I, we try to keep them super busy because super busy birds are happy birds. Happy, happy. And we, I try, like we try so hard to give them plenty of sunshine, my mom and I. So it's like, it's a job. Birds are a big responsibility. Do you ever give Puffman mealworms? Now I used to. 
till um, my veterinarian, I had uh, a different veterinarian at the time, <laughs> told me not to because he could get like parasites, tapeworms from the millworms. And millworms are just so high in protein too, um, to also be careful with that. Puffy used to go into the garden. This was years ago before I, I knew anything. He loved snails. Him and his brother, Pierre, they would go in and they would get the snails. They would yank the little snails out of the shell and the snails would be just foaming. You know how snails foam? They would have snail foam all over them and they'd be shaking them, killing them. Snail juice going everywhere. They'd be fighting over the snails. Yes, snails. Don't don't feed your bird snails. Um, and... It's, uh, it was something, and my vet said, that's not a good idea. They can get parasites and all kinds of stuff from the snails. But Puffy would, he would love to have a live diet if he could. He does kill spiders in here if he finds one. He will rip the legs off and keep it alive for a while and then eats it. You do that. You torture things and then you eat them. I try to stop it. I, I don't want him to be, you know, eating things like that, but he does. And I can't, you know, protect every spider. I, He loves those daddy long legs. Yes, a crime scene. I really have to keep lizards away from him. He wants lizards so bad and they carry salmonella. So he can't be, you know, eating lizards. My gosh, he is. Puffman is a savage. Um, how do you keep rescuing when it is so devastating when they pass away because of their history before you rescue them? It's so hard to open your heart. It really is. And, you know, it's just hard. You, you know, after a, a rescue, I've said I am not going to take in another bird. After my macaw died that I rescued like 20 years ago, I said I'm done. No more. Well, he came... He needed help real bad. Somebody butchered his wing, cut it, and he was infected. And it took a long time to gain his trust. And then he, Maui, needed help. And he showed up in a box. They said he was an Amazon. I opened the box. It's a kaiik. Poor Maui. He had, a, he had a hole in his chest. He was mutilating. And then who else? Who else needed help that just showed up all of a sudden? Um, um, my... African Grey Casey, who's passed away, I became, I joined Peace when I got Maui because he was mutilating himself. That's why I joined Peace. I didn't know what to do. And they really helped. And I learned a lot. And, and, the, and now Maui doesn't have a hole in his chest anymore. Um, and then my African Grey, not this one, I fostered. I decided to adopt her. Um, and then she passed away because she was fed a sea diet for many years before Peace rescued her. But she lived here with happiness for a while. And then Quinn was a foster. And he is a wild parrot. And the thing about him is he wants to be with other parrots. So he's not one of those birds that's going to hang out with you. You know, he, he wants to do his own thing. And a lot of people want a bird that's going to, like, serve them. So he's happy here. And I'm fine with him just doing his thing and... I, I, he actually, I don't like to say this, but he doesn't live in his cage. He's out all day long. At night, I do put him away because you, oh, oh, this is a big deal, you guys. This is a big deal. He just invited me to pet him. So you got to understand, this is a wild parrot. Okay, thank you. And for him to like, trust me like that, that's a big deal. Wow, thank you for that. You made my night, Quinn. Yeah, you made my night. Thanks, little guy. So um, I, I was just like, you know what? He is happy here, and nobody was adopting him. He'd been in the program for two years. Yes, salmonella. Lizards carry salmonella. Reptiles carry salmonella. That's why Puffy cannot eat them. Um, and so I adopted him. Yeah, so that's the thing. Lizards have an occasional shrink of, yeah you gotta be do wait oh there's a lot of questions do kaiks have smelly poops my kaik does even after a healthy diet okay so if it's a smelly poop there's a, there's a chance there's bacteria in that poop and i would definitely have your parrot checked out poop is not supposed to smell 
Um, sometimes like a morning poop will have an odor. Um, and when they're stressed out, hormonal, sometimes that poop will smell, but poop is not supposed to smell. So I would definitely um, get, you know, go, go, go have them do a fecal test. Go get some labs done if you can. Um, and remember, remember parrots hide their illnesses because they're prey animals and they're always scared of getting eaten. So they are going to act tough and you're usually not going to know that your bird is sick until it's too late. And the poop is, is like a great way for us to know something's wrong. So if there's some smell, there's a chance there is something going on. So I would just, you know, take them in and get that checked out. It, you just might need a little antibiotics, probiotics, this biome, right? Probiotics, which I'm supposed to give Victoria. And um, that could really help. Let me show you the probiotics, but please go, go get your bird, go get your bird checked out. Because our the poop is a gift. And it's like one of our very few things that let us know something's wrong. Probiotics. They have liquid for babies. You can get the liquid version. I had already bought the pills and I just open the capsule, pour it into water, mix it, and then give it to Victoria in a syringe. But it really helps their poops, their gut. Um, it's awesome. My avian vet recommends this. All right. And you order it online. Order it from the company. That way you know it's 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 handled properly because it has to stay refrigerated yes so reptiles do carry salmonella and that is why you know if you have reptiles you want to wash your hands when you're handling your parrots and keep the reptile food separately and that's why puffy can't get a hold of any lizards and in fact when he killed the lizard outside this was a while ago i did take the dead lizard and I took Puffy to see Dr. Young um, to test the lizard, it poured, that poor dead lizard, halfway eaten by Puffy. I, it was, you know, by the time I got, because, you know, the lizard's tail came off, Puffy got a hold of the neck, he breaks the neck every time. He's shaking it to death, trying to eat it. I'm trying to get in there. He's biting me. It's a scene. Blood, it's terrible, terrible. So these, you know, these parrots, you guys, you got to understand they're wild animals. And um, so I just grabbed the lizard, grabbed Puffy, and we went straight to the vet. And um, I'm trying to remember, did Dr. Young put Puffy on antibiotics that day for that? He might have. It was, it was an expensive, it was an expensive lizard, a poor lizard. So I keep, I keep Puffy locked up out there to protect him, but also to protect the wildlife. Because look at him. He's a wild animal. Come on out. Okay, I'm a pet sitter and give probiotics to cats when they're producing soft and smelly. Probiotics is a big deal, you guys. Um, it's like you're, I'm starting to hear veterinarians that are up with the new stuff really talk about it. It's so important for their guts, but you have to get the right probiotics because there's a lot of probiotics that doesn't work by the time it gets to the gut. All righty, so try try giving Puffman cat toys to attack. <laughs> I know he has all kinds of toys. He's just he likes the moving, you know. He likes live things. Um, no, there's really no way to tell a kayak's age, honestly. You know, birds that have not been cared for properly that are young, they might look old. Um, birds that have been really cared for, they might look young. Um, cockatoos, though, like Victoria cockatoo, the more mature they are, the more deep auburn their eyes get. So the females, they have these beautiful auburn eyes. And the older they get, the more auburn. And her eyes are super auburn in the sun. They're like red. And so she's 50 years old. So she's, you know, she's an older cockatoo. Floor to flora. Porta flora, by the way. Some love the taste of the powder. Really? I did not know. Yeah, probiotics. Viz, viz biome. Look at her. Well, you guys, it's been so fun. I have no idea what time it is. But I got to do probiotics for them. And I got to do some Victoria Cockatoo meds. And um, it's raining. <gasps> 
It's rain again. What does Jesse like to do? He likes to be outside. He likes to play. He likes to run around. He likes to play with his toys. He loves acorn squash. And like when we're not filming, he has more freedom here. Like right now, I like to keep everybody where I can visually see them because I'm filming and I get distracted and accidents can happen. Um, but he loves to be outside and walk around and flap his wings. And he likes to go places. He, but I'm careful where I take him because bird theft is like a real thing. So you gotta be careful. I don't want somebody following me home or grabbing him. So I'm always worried about that. Hi, handsome. We're talking about you. Yes, we are handsome bird. And Victoria's sneezing. That's concerning. That's what I do not want to hear. Oh, gosh. I'm going to stick her in the breathing treatment. He is such a good bird. Birds retail, super expensive. Yeah, so you got to remember that when you're walking around. Especially if people are desperate right now. They don't look at a bird as a family member, right? They look at it as a dollar sign, a piece of jewelry. They don't, you know... And so quick money, right? When people are desperate, they're gonna, they're gonna do things. So you just gotta be aware. Be aware with your, especially these guys that you love so much. Yeah, I love them so much. You're a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh, you give me a kiss. Can I have another kiss. Thank you. I love you. You want more. You want more, don't ya? Yes, you do. Oh, I love those feathers. Yeah, times are scary. We just gotta be really smart and aware. I, a parrot store is like a jewelry store. You are so right, spirit matter. So everybody needs to, you know, be super careful. Don't put any bumper stickers on your car saying like, I'm a proud bird mom or something like that. Where people will see that you got parrots. So don't, you know, I always recommend don't do that. You don't want anybody knowing about your birds when you're driving around, right? Like, I like to keep my windows shut here. Like right now they're open and the lights are on. So people, neighbors, although I'm sure a lot of people know I have birds, but still, I, I just closed the curtains. I do not advertise that I got birds ever. Well, I am on YouTube, right? I just don't let people know where I live. Okay. Good ideas. Windows and doors locked. Yes. And remember, trick or treating is coming. So put your birds away. Hyacinths are around $15,000. I know. I know. And African greys have gone way up. So you guys got to be careful with your, your babies. Yeah. And cameras get cameras. You know, these cameras are super cheap now. And you could download the app to your phone. So you can watch your birds all day. And it's nice because the cameras let you know the temperature of your of the bird's room. Especially with all these power outages, right? You have a power outage, your camera's not working, then you know your power's out. And you need to get home because the windows are closed and the AC is shut off. So cameras are good. Hard not to advertise <laughs> you have birds because they're noise. I know. Jesse's laughing. Thomas, stop advertising. Ah! That, but you know what? Thomas sounds like a crow, so maybe people think it's a crow. <laughs> right? Well, we love you guys. Um, we're going to get going. It's time to put the crow to bed. Are you going to go to sleep, Mr. Crow? Huh? I don't know what time it is. Um, it's time to put these two lovebirds to bed. Oh, my goodness. You see, baby. See, I used to be ba baby's favorite. And then Puffy came into the picture, and now there's no room for me in baby's life. He traded me in. All right, guys, we love you, and I'll keep updating you, and check our Instagram and our Facebook. Um, that's where I do a lot of updates, and thank you. And um, we just hope you're all doing well, and we appreciate you. Have a good night or good morning or good afternoon.